by far, if I'm being honest, it was really just the experience to work with, uh, you know, Justin Briner. It's always been a dream of mine to work with him. And, uh, you know, just the, the energy that he brings to the table and like. Welcome, friends and fans, to another episode of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And after this trying national week, we hope to lift your spirits, because today we are visiting the world of Boko no Hero Academia with seven members of the English language cast. So without further ado, let's head on down to UA High School and meet today's guests. Our first guest is an actress whose roles include Black Butler, Soul Eater, and Space Battleship Yamato. Today she is here as the voice of the amphibious hero, Suya Sui. Please welcome, aka Froppy, please welcome back Monica Rial. Hey! Hi everybody! How are you, Patty? I am okay. How are you doing, my dear? I'm doing great. I'm visiting my mom in Houston, hence the lovely tree that is still up. I'm very festive. <laughs> uh, rule of thumb, I was always told, is you have a full week after the Monday following New Year's Day. So you have until, everybody has until next Monday. Or yeah. or considering what's going on in the world, leave it up until as long as you want. I told her, I was like, maybe just leave it up until next year. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I've known some people who have done that. <laughs> Got to the point. Uh, Monica, it's always a pleasure to see you again. Oh, I'm so glad to have you. So glad to be starting off the new year with you. Yes. Great. And we've got some other interesting folks. Our next guest is a voice actor whose roles include Five Nights at Freddy's, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and Black Clover. Today he joins us to discuss the voice of the germaphobic villain known as Overhaul. Please welcome back our buddy, Kellen Goff. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing, young man? I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing okay. <laughs> there, there were, uh, we we had unfortunately we had a passing of our friend Brad Venable yesterday, so we're all sort of uh, getting strong from that. But um, he was a great soul, and he would want us to push through with this. So I'm dedicating today to Brad, and uh, I hope everyone is having a great time today and continues to do so. Absolutely. Well, it's it's always good to see you again, Kellen. I'm so glad you're doing well. For sure, man. Same for you. Always. Our next guest is an actor whose credits include Ruby, Tokyo Ghoul, and Space Battleship Yamato. Today he joins us as the voice of Homeroom Teacher Eraserhead. Please welcome Christopher Wakeup. Hey, how's it going, Patty? Good, good, good. <laughs> and since I have you and Monica here, da, 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 oh, da, da, oh my gosh. <laughs> Patty, yeah. I just met you, but you're already like uh, one of my favorite people just, just, <laughs> just because you have that. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, that's the super fragilistic deluxe remote control light up version. And, dude, uh, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah, I, I, I am, I am. I am. I, I won't say my age. I just said it to a birthday, but yeah, I'm old school. Uh, I, I, I am old school. UHF channels in the seventies watching Star Blazers, as it was known back then. Oh man, yes. Uh, well, I am sitting in a valley. It's nighttime. Uh, these beautiful mountains on each side. It's very peaceful. I'm just glad to be here with you guys today. Oh, so glad to hear. So glad to have you here, Christopher. Look forward to you joining us for many more of these as in the months to come. He's Back way point. camping. That's right, way <laughs> camping today. <laughs> Definitely. Our next guest is an actor and screenwriter whose credits include Attack on Titan, Black Clover, and Ruby. Today he joins us as the voice of the avian hero, jet black hero, Soko Yomi. Please welcome Josh Greeley. Hi, everybody. Hey. Hey. Jazz oh. hands. 2021 Jazz Hands. Yes, yeah, indeed, indeed. Josh, how you holding up? Dude, Honestly, uh, considering everything, I, pretty good. I hope you guys are doing well too. Thank you so much for for giving me the chance to be to be here today. Oh, I really no problem. You I, 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 you're only one of my favorite guys. When we have physical conventions, we'll get back to that. And yeah, yeah. absolutely. So glad to have you I'm here. Great. And I see in our private chat, you want this? Don't want it so bad. And it lights up too. What's the remote control like? Like, does it? It's a little, like, it's a little fob thing. Uh, I does mean, it like move? Does it actually have like motorized parts? Yeah. Like, you know, like yeah. floating water? That's so dope. Yeah, I know. Okay. Too many toys, Josh. You're going to have to put up another shelf. Oh, <laughs> oh, God. God. Uh, Josh needs to come down to Galaxy Cat headquarters to see the toys we got there. And then he'll realize he does not have a problem. 
Okay. <laughs> Please, yes, I need that. I need that affirmation. <laughs> I need. Our next guest, she is an actress, director, and scriptwriter whose body of work includes Fairy Tale, Full Metal Alchemist, and the voice of Cammy on Street Fighter. Today, she joins us as the voice of the acidic Pinky. Please welcome the always amazing Caitlin Glass. Caitlin, you're muted. Caitlin, you are muted. Is you? There you go. Been the longest day. You don't even know. <laughs> you don't even know. Uh, I was sitting here while you guys were talking, going, "Remember to unmute yourself when it's your turn." And mm, mm, mm. <laughs> no, no. Do yeah. as I do. Do as I direct, not as I act. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> Caitlin, how are you? Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> well, yeah. after, after 2020, that's uh, that's an absolutely fair response, and yeah. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, and what else too. Well, as always, is always it's good to good to see you again, and great to start off the year with you. Thank you. Good to be here, guys. Hi, uh, absolutely. Hey. Our next guest is an actor, engineer, and director whose body of work includes Lupin the Third, Full Metal Alchemist, and an adorable anime called Dragon Ball. Today, he joins us as the voice of the beloved hero All Might. Please welcome back everyone's friend, Chris Sabat. He's so fresh. Did you guys hear me during the intro? I figured out how to unmute myself while you guys do like the video oh. intro to it, so I get to do like my little voice. You were backstage, over buddy. I know. Oh, they, so they didn't hear me? I don't know. Because no. I know it mutes you anyway. This is well, the Sabbath crew. Uh, so yeah, if, you, if everyone know, uh, Chris Sabbath was the first person to successfully hack our system. And when we're signing off, he was like, this is Galaxy Con. <laughs> Uh, they're smarter. That you guys are getting just smarter and smarter every day. It's good to see you guys. Uh, it's good to see you, Chris. Uh, how you How you been? I've been okay. I've been okay. It's been. It's just. It's been one interesting, one interesting challenge after the next. And uh, I don't know. I think this would. I think this would be as good of a time as any because everybody loves stories. To uh, let you all know, if you didn't know, that actually at the very very beginning of December, despite my best efforts. I got the Rona. So, uh, mm -hmm. and very, very luckily I got the, the, like if I could special order a version of the coronavirus for a person, I would special order the one that I had, which was enough to know something's weird, uh, and enough to like expedite the test. I was already going to get before I flew anyway. And, uh, yeah, it was only sick for a few days, but it's, it was crazy. Cause the person who gave it to me, got really 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 sick it was a contractor that was working in the house who brought an assistant who just wasn't careful had a fever or something just still yeah, came over geez. anyway and um but luckily you know i was able to stay away from everybody and uh like it wasn't a like i was it was enough for me to be able to quarantine to make sure nobody else got it i maybe only had one or two people over between the time that i got it <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the time that I found out that I had it, so I a T-shirt that says Christopher Savitt gave me COVID. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It hit me harder than it hit you, jerk. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we had to get those pickup lines. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, to be done, to be done. Well, well, Chris, absolutely glad to have you here. So glad that uh, that uh, you were fortunate in, uh, in, in your recovery. And uh, hey, man, it's, it's, it's always good. Always good to see you. Well, thanks. The only good thing about getting the coronavirus is that afterwards you're at least you know immune to it for a while. We think. Yeah. So. Yeah, so to, we, I've been volunteering to go help people. That's that, cool. very commendable on you, man. Awesome. Cool. And speaking of awesome, our final guest, this young man is an actor and singer whose credits include Final Fantasy VII, Yuri on Ice, and Black Clover. Today, he joins us to talk about giving voice to the inheritor of one for all, Deku. Please welcome back Justin Briner. Yay. Hey, Justin! Hi. Hello. Hey. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in forever. <laughs> hey, everybody. Uh, Justin, how you doing? I am. Uh, I'm hanging in there. I've just been been in my same old ivory tower the past year, uh, trying to grow my hair enough to get out again. Yeah. Slow going. We love you, Quasi. <laughs> <laughs> I see you moved back to New England still. Like uh, you're back in your New England residence, actually. Exactly. With the, it's an honest living. 
Um, That's good. And the, the lobster is fresh. <laughs> I always ask for you, but your section's always full. So. <laughs> Uh, well gentlemen and lady as always uh we miss you and uh, we look forward to the day when we can return to uh the normal way we did business having our physical shows and we absolutely look forward to the day where we can get you back at our stages and get you all back in front of your fans and to the meantime we have the GalaxyCon virtual stage and as always it's a pleasure to have all of you back on it once again and those of you who join us for the first time Yay! good to be here Yes, our team right now is going through the chat room and pulling out the questions. In the meantime, I just want to start this on off. Um, this is a, this is such a, a curious show, and I've said this before on other panels, where one of the reasons I love it so much is not only because it's awesome, but, but what it's done, I guess, for geek culture. It's it's made comic book fans and anime fans and manga fans when they wouldn't necessarily cross into that lane and it's starting to make some anime fans into comic book fans whereas before these were parallel uh, lines to it too so uh, what what do you what do you think is what do you think is the secret to uh, to my hero's success good question we're not in line anymore we can't uh we, we can't say we start with you. We can't stick it on anyone. Well, anybody, anybody wants to go popcorn style, go run ahead. I think that it has a lot to do with the characters themselves. I mean, you have characters that are, forgive the pun, quirky and different and not your your regular kind of anime characters. And there's something in each character that I think you can find in yourself to identify with. So no matter the character, even Mineta, as gross as he can be, there's still something that each of us identifies with him, with, right? It's just a thing. I feel like maybe that's what it is. Even the villains, the villains are three-dimensional, which is kind of rare, you know? Yes, absolutely. I say it speaks volumes to Hodokoshi sensei as well. Like, he is just absolutely brilliant it's it's clear i think what's i think what we're starting to see though is the result of of japanese like creators growing up with a lot of like international media um i think we all are and i think we're going to see that all across the globe because we're able like we're able to experience so many different things and it's clear uh it's clear that he is just really tuned in to kind of the world of of like geek culture and and comic books and he's clearly a big fan and uh his it's it's just kind of his touches throughout the show which really do make it special like he's amazing for sure great agreed agreed anyone else got to chime in that's a good answer. No, at least that was still. No, we got to stand on that. Yeah. I, 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 just a small thing. I found that universes that are so huge that you could feasibly create your own character to be in that universe and they could maybe exist in it because it's just such a, a wide, uh, it, it, there are so many, like, like everybody has quirks instead of only a few people have quirks. Yeah. That's, that's not really that it's something that's been done that often. And I think Horikoshi Sensei uh, nails it in that respect. But um, I think at least with me growing up, I always latched on to uh, shows where I could make my own thing and sort of imagine that I was in there. It, it yeah. brings that uh, it, it definitely brings the creativity to the yard and stimulates the uh, right side of the brain there's there is uh an incre it is an incredibly immersive uh setting and environment mm -hmm. and that's absolutely I'm, true i'm focusing i'm sorry <laughs> i think the timing of the show is unbelievable too it's like america and the world was having its moment with superheroes already and then here comes like the most amazing superhero anime of all time it's like yeah. timing mean, you couldn't have picked a better time for this show to exist it's just like this amazing multimedia convergence when it comes to that. Like the, mm -hmm. the audience was so, so very ready for a show like this and in, in a mainstream way, you yeah. know, um, yeah. that it really makes a difference. Yeah. Yeah. Another, another thing I, I, I really admire is that it, it, in, in Western superhero stuff, there's a propensity to, uh, okay, here's a, a joke character with joke powers. The, 
there's no there's no joke powers or, or or joke characters in my hero. There's people with some maybe ridiculous powers and stuff of pulling grapes out of your head, but that character does amazing things with them, and and that's one thing that that I really like about it. It's a, it's almost like a role playing game in the sense of okay, you've got this character with this mindset, and it's a, there's a lot of ingenuity in pushing these characters into some really really interesting stuff. Mm. I think it says a lot to using um, that sometimes your weaknesses can become your strengths mm -hmm. as well. Kind of at that same idea that like these characters might not have what you consider superhero powers, but they use those powers in a way that make them incredibly heroic. So I think that that's kind of a cool message. It has so many great messages, though. This show is just so great. Mm, absolutely. And a lot of great cosplay, too. Yes. <laughs> 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 absolutely okay. absolutely uh what's uh, what's been what's been your 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 favorite moment being associated with uh my hero man oh. um we were doing publicity stuff for season four um i think it was beginning of 2019 somewhere is it summer 2019 somewhere around there it feels so long ago now but um we uh, we went to New York Comic Con, and they had us do our our big panel at uh, the stage of Madison Square Garden, and uh, my dad and sister got to be there for that, and that was definitely and will be forever probably one of the biggest milestones of my career and that wouldn't have happened without this show. So I'm very grateful to it for that. Right Those are memories I'll keep with me forever. Justin was there. <laughs> I to say, uh, the premiere last yeah. year. Yeah. Last February yeah was, it was so much fun. Oh man. It was wild. I've never seen anything like it. Like so many fans. I mean, we, we've been places with lots of fans for sure, but that's like when you're at a con, you expect to see thousands of fans. You don't always expect to see thousands of fans to fill one movie theater and for yeah. to get to be dressed up and walk the red carpet and all of that fun, like Hollywood type stuff that us Texas yeah. folk don't experience too much. I mean, I think it's like Kellen's everyday life. I'm pretty. Oh, sure. shut up! <laughs> <laughs> I felt like, I felt like a, a kid in a candy shop that day. I, I it was. I wasn't even in the movie and people were coming up to me. That was like a really surreal day, but I was just latching onto Rico's leg most of it. So there are too many people. Yeah, but no, it felt movie star. Yeah. From like before the film, before we were even at the theater, just like being in the hotel with all of the actors and the energy we had and yeah. sharing all like the yeah. thought that we'd put into the our outfits for the evening. To, to getting down there to seeing everybody and then the movie's amazing so there was that uh <laughs> the party afterwards like every part of it is just unforgettable really awesome right on i think that's hard, to, hard to imagine that was just a year ago too yeah yeah it feels oh, so long ago now. <laughs> i do think that that's like what i enjoy most about it. i mean yes the show is great and everything else is great but just the people, like mm -hmm. my colleagues, um, the directors, uh, the fans, like going to my hero specific conventions is like a totally different experience because everybody is so happy. Everybody's like going to a candy store and everybody gets free candy. Like it's just the coolest experience. So I think the people more than anything, especially this whole year, it's been, it's been rough. And to think back to those moments of like the times that we all had together mm -hmm. and the times that we have that's you. Good memories. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, to it. <laughs> Josh, how about you? I I was gonna say the the premiere too last year. It was just such a it was such a, we don't get to experience stuff like that very often. I got to have my wife with me and then we got to you know got to dress up. I don't do that very yeah, often so either. True. And and like the getting to figure out cool things like, hey, can we cosplay in our nice clothes too? Like low key cosplay was really fun and just the the, the energy and, and everybody was just so excited to be there. And not not just the fans, but all of us involved and it was a beautiful day too and uh at the hotel and everybody getting to hang out and get lunch and, and just kind of chill there in the in la and um yeah and i think that was kind of the that was at least for me that was one of the first times that we had 
so much of the crew, not just cast, but crew as well there to 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 celebrate and see it as well so it, it, it was kind of like the entirety of the my hero family got to get together in in one big celebration of it and it was really cool and we got a big picture with all of us it, it took a while but we wrangled everyone mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice christopher how about you yeah definitely the premiere and when uh uh when josh was saying that it was only february that's insane to me like <laughs> i can't believe that uh just the difference between february and march basically my uh my kids went on spring break and then they just never came back from spring break in march. <laughs> they just were at home for the rest of our lives for an eternity uh and then like the the moments right before that are these unbelievable like memories from being in los angeles at the premiere and so it's like the contrast uh between those two moments just could not be more stark yeah. uh but I, that will always live in my memory. I mean, the, just the whole experience was so amazing. It was so great. Um, Chris, how about you? Muted. Uh, Muted. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I didn't want to like sit. I was sipping on a drink. I didn't want to interrupt anybody. Uh, <laughs> But I forgot to unmute. I'm awesome at this stuff. Only in yours. I'd say by far, if I'm being honest, it was really just the experience to work with, uh, you know, Justin Briner. It's always been in mind to work with him. And, uh, you know, just the, the energy that he brings to the table and, like, the fact that, you know, he always pays for things whenever we go places and like yeah. uh you know whenever i need spare change or if i need someone to get something for me when i'm at a convention i can always ask him and he's <laughs> very quick to do it and uh you know he's just been we've just become so close over the years and um that's that's been the biggest reward for me personally and i guess maybe a close second might have been like I, I'll never forget when we were first starting to promote the show, and I think Justin, you'll you'll speak to this too. But like when we first started promoting for it, and it was very in its very early stages, we'd barely even finished a, a, redubbing a season of it. We were already going to, uh, I think it was uh, was it Anime Expo or one yeah, of the big yeah, one of the big cons, and they had brought out some of the the producers from the show, and they were just so cool and like flooding us with so much praise and it felt for the first time after all these years of working on these various different things that it really felt as if they were making this show with us and we were a genuine part of mm. the the whole process a lot of the time i mean over the years we've it's very easy to kind of just feel like, oh, well, I just put an English voice on this in case someone happens to want to watch it. But they really made you feel as if like we really were making this show with them. And that was super special to me. And uh, the collaboration that has happened between like Toho and Funimation and getting to do stuff that you would normally not get to do like those amazing premieres like that's been part of the fun of working on the show too because it's felt larger than life since it's since it started you know it's pretty right impressive. On. very good very good justin bring us home yeah it's it's what everyone has said essentially from from production to the show itself to meeting the fans who are so passionate and enthusiastic about this this wonderful kind of collaboration um it's just been such a dream so it is nice to have those really really fond memories to look back on right now very good very good all right i just have one more question and of course since this is a my hero panel this is the eternal question that is asked of everyone on a my hero panel if you had a quirk and you could choose your quirk what would it be <clears throat> who wants to go first or I could call up on someone. I think before I said I wanted to be able to teleport, but now I would like to be able to just be free of any fear of catching COVID <laughs> or giving it to anybody. Like if I could make myself a little bubble, like a little anti-COVID bubble, and I could just bring people in, now it would be a very crowded bubble. But just bring people in, and then that would be my quirk now. That right on. Be. Yep. <laughs> I know everybody's a lot of people's standby answers have been amended after this year, so <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, you know, the, the ability to come up with a cure for anything. Like I know overall talks a lot about that, but yeah. some some literal cure making quirk would be very nice. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, sorry. No, go ahead, Josh. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want a quirk that's just like make plain mundane everyday food gourmet food. Like it just turned any sort of anything into just called being in Texas. Delicious, healthy <laughs> feast. Well, healthy. It's I mean, threw in that word healthy. Oh, healthy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Never mind. <laughs> chili, <laughs> healthy chili, <meats> chili <laughs> dogs become, you know, it's like refined frankfurters with a compote. <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. Very earthy. Bean compote. <laughs> compote. <laughs> uh, Caitlin, you got one? Mm, I would like the quirk that enables me to come up with a clever answer to this question every time I'm asked it. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's meta. Yeah. Uh, and, I, and, I you, and, I, and I think you said that before, so it's absolutely fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the quirk. Yeah, that's fine. Christopher, how about you? Um, especially these days, I feel like I have a tendency to uh, sort of romanticize the past, look back with nostalgia. I would love to have the quirk to actually just go back and visit the past so that I could remind myself, like, it wasn't as good as I'm remembering right now. <laughs> like, go back to fifth grade and just be like, oh, yeah, this sucked. Uh, I don't like this at all. <clears throat> the power Excuse to ruin me. memories. Yeah, yeah. Just to, to <laughs> suffuse myself a little reality, because, like, I feel like I just want to go back to 2019 so bad mm. all the time. You're yeah. be called the bad old days. <laughs> right. I'd just be like, oh, it wasn't that great. Okay, cool. Cool, cool, cool. I'm all right. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Chris, how about you? Uh, let's see. I I thought of one, and like really as soon as you asked me, I forgot it, because I've always tried to do a different one every time, and it's complicated. Uh, I, I want one of two quirks. One would be a quirk where like I could make anyone – uh, suddenly have uh, funny makeup on whenever I wanted. Like if anyone I'm talking to, they'd suddenly have like really weird stage makeup on or something like that. And it'd just be funny to me. Um, a good realistic quirk during these times would be, I would love the ability to start any recording session without any sort of technical glitches. Um I'm not going to I'm not going to name any specific software package or anything like that. I think we can all connect on this. Um, like, I'm not going to name the source at all. Uh, just but yeah, I just wish that would work consistently. Like, uh, yeah, not. Yeah. There. yeah, I'm glad this has helped us all connect. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, I would be remiss if I did not mention the fact that a really fun, funny, like it, this might be interesting to any fan, I guess. But there was a moment where I had gone to go get some computer supplies. At, I By far, I'm very lucky that right down the street, there is this place uh, called Micro Center that has like, it's th- like the most dorky store of all time. And uh, they have everything, every computer component. And sure enough, I saw Chris Waycamp like in line checking out. And it was like this weird moment. And I don't ever really, people who know me know I don't normally transpose these two things. But I did in my mind all of a sudden imagine that it was All Might uh, seeing him at the store as well. And I was having a very hard time not geeking out thinking like, what if they had seen each other at the computer component store buying, uh, you know, uh, HDMI cables and, and do you remember that, Chris? You oh had yeah, to, that was like, such a okay. strange moment in my quarantine life because <laughs> I I ended up at the store with my son and we you know had our masks on and everything and then I saw the hat and I was like, no, that can't be him. And then here he comes. He's right next to me at the register. He's at the register right next. I'm like, I gotta say hi to him. I, it was so. <laughs> It was so awesome, and yet it's, it's so re- we were so removed because they're so busy all the time there too. But he's like, "Oh my gosh!" You're yeah. like, "Hey, I make computers now." I'm like, oh, "Okay, cool, thanks, <laughs> bye, <laughs> bye." Yeah, that was like one of those cutscenes from the video game that you just don't. You know, it's just like you're right in the middle of the action, and then like cutscene, like, "Oh, I guess we're in a cutscene now." Okay, <laughs> yeah. we were a filler uh, episode at that moment. Yes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. Uh, uh, Justin, bring us home. All right. Um, and, and I've thought about this now that uh, in, in my quarantine life, I'm like desperately scrambling for any content I can get my hands on just to I have something different to to occupy my attention. Uh, so now what I need is like 
a, a, a quirk that lets me know if I look at any piece of content, how much I'm actually going to enjoy the ratio of time spent to, uh, mm -hmm. to right. enjoyment. Is this worth the potential 200 plus hours I'm going to put into it? So many times I'll look oh, up, right. I'm going to watch this movie and be like, uh, there are two reviews. That's one is this the best thing of all time. And one is mm -hmm. this is an absolute disgrace. That's good. <laughs> A quirk that gives you accurate reviews. That would be yes. amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely that totally works and a reminder to our audience if you would like to chat with our guests like i am now or purchase a personalized autograph sign up at galaxycon.com and i think we're good to go on audience questions so let's go ahead and roll our first one and this is gonna come from burrito he wants to know if you could be best friends with any character in the show who would it be hot yeah <laughs> he's so chill <laughs> I feel I feel like we would I, I feel like it, it would just be real talk all the time with him. You you need a chill friend like that. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Hmm. Who's who's got another? Um, I'll say Hagakure because she's invisible. Yes. Like who doesn't want an invisible friend? Like that'd be amazing. You'd be like, oh, I wonder if that boy likes me. I'm going to go find out for you. Like, she just go over there and, like, hang out with him and see if he's talking about you. Or, like, oh, I'm broke. I'm going to go steal some money for you. Who's going to know? Like, good friend. <laughs> good friends will steal for you. Yeah. You need money. I mean, I guess as much as he can frustrate me, if I was going to be best friend, I'd probably be best friends with Bakugo because then nobody can ever touch me. Like I'm untouchable if Bakugo is my best friend. Like they have to listen to him yell and then I can just ditch real quick. <laughs> like no conversation ever. But yeah. he would yell a lot. I don't know if I could deal with all the yelling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's got another? Josh, got one? Principal Nezu. Just for the stories. <laughs> well, you started where? A laboratory? Tell me about that. <laughs> fair. Fair. Yeah. Yeah. Christopher, how about you? Is there, a, I, I'm racking my brain here. Is there a, uh, is there a character that like can clean a house instantaneously or something? I'm trying to think of like a really cool roommate that you could live with that would just have a quirk that could just like, like clean things, do all the sort of chores and the housework just like instantaneously. Overhaul. Yeah. Overhaul. Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. Uh sure. I think overhaul would be great at especially fighting germs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. uh he would be all into that. Um, oh yeah. Got the windex in a holster. Maybe yeah, overhaul right. or like the wind guy. Who's what's the wind guy's name? I can't remember. His it's name is oh, oh, Inasa. Yeah, Inasa. Yeah. yeah. I might be friends with him. He's really loud. He's really positive, and I think his wind powers would be great for like blowing the leaves off the yard. <laughs> Absolutely fair. Absolutely fair. So, Christopher, how about you? Mine's somewhat uh, related to Christopher's as well. I would want to be friends with Recovery Girl, especially uh, these days. But I just be like, oh, I'm feeling hungover. Recovery Girl, come over. Let's hang out. Like, boop. I'm feeling better. Mm. Um, that'd be a great a recover like a recovery friend would be a good friend to have. Like they could always like fix you up. Right on, right on. Overall, could do that too. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little more permanent fix. But yeah, yeah. Uh, Justin, how about you? Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, I would want to be besties with fat gum i'm a very uh i'm food motivated and i feel like he's got uh probably the like the good hot spots to go get a nice dinner yeah yeah I know the underground fair. place yeah very nice uh, speaking of food burrito thank you for that opening question that was a fun <laughs> one uh, what do we have next and uh, this comes from chief gage how do you prepare your voice for acting warm up Lots yes. of warm ups. Um, Lubrication. Yes, lots of water, lots of warming up, vocal warm ups. Um, I always tell people, like, there's an app for that, literally, mm. called Vocal Warm Up. And it's, oh, really oh. <laughs> it's amazing. I did not know that. Hmm. I just go to this, uh, there, there's 
something voice academy it's called but it has all these uh you'll recognize them by the purple thumbnails that say five minutes ten minutes and they have all different kinds of vocal warm-ups on youtube and i always go through like a 10 minute or 15 minute one because it's like for singing but it works really well for voice acting as well pump up, songs, pump up songs are really good i have a playlist for that yeah, very much. Uh, anybody else have anything maybe unusual they do for warming up or just getting into a character's head that they're willing to admit to? I like to choose either bands or albums for for particular characters that are recurring, and then I like to listen to those before I before I do before I perform those characters. Just kind of get you in the in the headspace. Mm -hmm. um, for the longest time, I would listen to either System of a Down or Rage Against the Machine um and for aizawa specifically because i feel like inside of him his exterior is very very calm but inside <laughs> of him is just a raging storm and yeah. so i um and that would always sort of put me in that place um and then it's it's great just singing along like in the in the mm -hmm. truck or whatever when you're going to the studio in the good old days when we would go to the studio so dude system of a down is a great choice just because like if you can mimic every single one of the crazy vocal things that serge Tankian does in those albums very you're true. sad you yeah. can do anything very true <laughs> i love it. <laughs> why have you forsaken me <laughs> yeah <laughs> everyone else too so all right chief uh hopefully they gave you a little bit of insight uh at the monsters inc show i do for disney uh black coffee and unfiltered cigarettes is our secret okay uh moving on what's our next one uh this goes from tanner what inspired the voice of your individual characters hmm um well, I think that for most of us, probably, it's, you know, we try to pay attention to what the original Japanese voice sounds like. Because, of course, if the original Japanese voice is way high, you don't want to come in and be way low or whatever. So you use that as kind of a springboard. Um, for Suyu's voice, what we did is I listened to um, Aoyuki over and over and over again to get that idea. And if you'll notice in Japanese, she's a little bit higher than Suyu is in English. We chose to kind of lower her register a little bit just because in the west we're not as used to squealy girls like at top speed so she's like you know what since Suyu has a little bit of a different style of voice let's bring her down so she can kind of be in that middle ground which has been kind of cool but it also is weird because it seems like she sticks out even more like they try to hide her in the background but you can always hear her because she's just kind of in that middle range <laughs> like she's very present <laughs> yeah yeah very much so did you audition? In the, I'm sorry. I, sorry, Tanner. I hate to stomp on your uh, question. Uh, I'm just enhancing it. Did you have that material when you auditioned for it? Or did you audition Then she brought you in and said, we're going to modify it some? How did that work? No, I auditioned. Um, I always did my homework, like especially for big shows like that. So if I knew that I was going to be auditioning, I'd at least look up and see who did what. So yeah, I was kind of surprised. Colleen actually was like, I didn't know you could do that. I was like, actually, I didn't know I could do that either until it just kind of came out of my face. So there you go. <laughs> very nice, very nice. <clears throat> who's, got, who's got another one that they can recall? I, so well, I was... sort of came in, uh, you know, season two. And uh, so, you know, the one of the best compliments I ever get is when fans are like, you're not the voice of Eraserhead in season one. But no, I'm not. And uh, I was very grateful to go through an audition process and be able to join the cast in season two. And, um, uh, you know, coming into that process with Colleen, uh, we we had a sort of double duty job of, you know, making sure that we were honoring the original performance and then also making sure that we were sort of honoring the uh, previous, you know, work for, of Alex Organ, who is the voice of Aizawa in season one uh, and a fantastic actor. Um, and so we, we, you know, we knew we wanted to keep things right in that wheelhouse that had already been established. Um, as far as, you know, my performance goes, I was just sort of pulling from every closed off male authority figure I've had, you know, in my life. And, uh, uh, you know, it's setting the voice. It was kind of already set. I'm a little more gravelly, I think, than, um, than perhaps Alex was in the way that he portrayed, uh, uh, Aizawa in season one. But as far as, you know, where it's coming from, it's just, 
Uh, every every dad that loves his kids so much, but darn it, he just can't show it. Um, that's 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 kind of where that comes from. Right. right absolutely. Came under that. Who's got another? Um, Mina <laughs> kind of came from uh, my California upbringing. So I grew up in Southern California where uh, the traditional Valley girl voice came from. And uh, so I just, I lean into that whenever uh, I'm allowed to, I don't take it too far, uh, but it just works for her so well. And more than any of the other characters, she's written with a lot of modern day slang. So that's really fun. Um, I just kind of knew when I auditioned, I can't remember. I, I always screw up the story, but I can't remember if Mina was actually in the sides or not. Or if I read for everyone and then Colleen pulled out something else that she wanted me to read. That's how it is in my head. But I don't know that that really happened. Uh, oh, was in the okay, well, then there you go. I can kind of tell because I'm a director and I understand like, oh, this is the this kind of girl and this is the this kind of girl. I recognize where Mina fits with her energy and the pitch of her voice, like where she goes in the puzzle. Um, so that was, that's another part of the inspiration of it. Just kind of knowing because I played all the other girls in the audition so far and hadn't done the Mina thing. So it's like, oh, it's, this is what you're looking for. And, uh, I had a lot of fun reading for all kinds of characters. Um, I think I liked reading for Minetta the most, but I knew I had a feeling after Colleen pulled out something else and had me read it. I'm like, if I'm cast at all, I bet it'll be for Mina. And it was, and that's fine. I love her. She's great. Awesome. Awesome. Who's got another recollection? Uh, Toko was pretty easy. He was fairly straightforward. He just, just he's very much just a quiet, stoic character that just randomly throws out really edgy sounding quotes, you know, whenever they're, whenever they're applicable. Uh, Dark Shadow was a little, well, it took a little bit more figuring out um, and a little more fun, I think, just because he, while he is supposed to be kind of a, a copy of Tokoyami, we didn't want to go with just the same voice because he's also more, he's, he's a dark version. He's a dark shadow, not just a shadow. And, um, he, uh, he has a little bit more of a unstableness to him. Like he, he's always on the verge of either going one way or another emotionally or with his power. So we had him be a little bit more, uh, chaotic and he kind of changes depending on the situation, his size and all that stuff. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Chris got one. Uh, I mean, when I auditioned for this, there was, I, I wasn't lucky enough to have any materials. Cause I don't think any were necessarily out at that moment. Uh, when, cause I can't, like all might comes in right away. All I knew is that Colleen, you know, was, she was casting it and I, and, I took a look at the character and it just, the voice seemed to kind of pop out of that, that character. You just look at that character and you, I knew exactly how I wanted to voice it. Now, Colleen and I went back a little bit back and forth, her going like, Oh, I think you should do it a little bit lower. And I'd always tell the story about how she made me audition like 10 times, I think. Um, and I keep increasing the number every time I tell the story, <laughs> but, um, and then when I, um, when, then when I finally kind of came in to do the work, it was, it's, it was kind of amazing that, uh, uh, Kenta Miyake, uh, Miya, Kenta Miya, the guy who does All Might's voice in Japanese, uh, Miyake, I think is his name. Um, he is, uh, like our voices are somewhat similar. Like, I feel like it's very easy to hear his voice and put my voice on top of that one. Like I, I enjoy trying to bring as much to it as possible, but uh luckily we got pretty close to the original voice as in when i auditioned so it was, it's just a lot of times just a matter of hearing what he does and just trying to match his skill while i'm doing it mm, very good very good i want to know how justin came up with that voice that he's <laughs> well let's oh, find right. out <laughs> no i i am uh thankfully uh Decker's voice sits very in in a natural place for me so i just uh and i i knew that going in that sort of what the they had chosen for the Japanese audio uh, was similar to where I, I is in my wheelhouse. So I just wanted to focus on, on how to keep it as, as honest as possible. Cause I, I, I thought based on what we'd seen that this character and his upbringing and, and, and his, uh, his relationships with, with peers, his age, it was going to mean a lot to a lot of people. Um, so 
yeah, mostly I just wanted to to make sure I did uh, the best I could to to do that character a service. I think we missed yeah. Kellen. No, yeah, no, I was, I was going back to him. I was going to say, Kellen, bring I'll, us I'll try and go quick. Um, I, have, I have a checklist. I'm not going to Oh, cool. <laughs> <Don't worry. laughs> Organized. I like it. Um, so when Overhaul Auditions came around, I was getting over the worst case of con crud that I ever had in my life. A, a What started as a cold from Dragon Con uh, turned into bronchitis. Mm. And Overhaul came around about when... You know, I was on the medication, but it still sounded like it. It was, it didn't really hurt, but my immune system was still shot. Um, so, uh, <laughs> what happened was I got the sides for him and uh, Sun Eater, and I tried both. I try, and uh, Colleen came back to me and said, Do the one you did for Sun Eater uh, with Overhaul's line. So I tried that, and it seemed to fit. Um, but yeah, he was always he, the, I, I mean, it was easier to do sort of the rasp that he had when the rasp was, uh, natural, but it, it sort of came naturally as the character went along. And then the fun one was I got almost full creative control when we got to do the overhaul monster mode. What we did was his normal voice and then, uh, Chris Guerrero, really talented guy, uh, dubbed over all my uh, lines. But then we also, I I had this sort of Dr. Claw undertone that I would re-record all the lines with. So we would do one that's like, um, give Harry back! And then put a give Harry back under it. And it was so much fun. So I, I love little moments where we get to experiment with that stuff. And I thank Colleen immensely for uh, for giving us the freedom there. Kellen, are you old enough to know who Dr. Claw was? I can't even understand. <laughs> I grew up with Inspector Gadget. Okay, just making sure. I still think together the uh, BK toy. It had it. Oh wait, no, that was the movie with the uh, with, with the with the musical guy. Yeah, <laughs> Roderick, yeah. Matthew Broderick. Yeah, Matthew uh, Broderick. Sorry, Matthew Broderick. And of course, the Dr. Claw. Of course, the Dr. Claw figure revealed his face, which you know. Yeah. <laughs> Too. So, uh, my producer says we have time. We got one more quick question. So let's go ahead and roll out on that one. And Alyssa, and she wants to know if you had to choose one song for your character's theme song, what would it be? Oh, it's awesome. not easy being green. Hello, hello. <laughs> After that, uh, uh, welcome to the Black Parade. Hmm. True. True. Hmm. I am really not up on like popular music at all. Not that this song would have to be a popular music song, but it's Mina. So yes, it would have to be. And I think it would be whatever it is, whatever the thing is that the kids are listening to nowadays. <laughs> That's her. Fair, fair, fair. Defaulting to that. Who's got another one? I'm sure oh, Toko my- just rocks out to all kind of metal. <laughs> yeah. Yep, Bulls all my made by Rage Against the Machine. All my yeah. like that song. It's like, baby, don't hurt me, don't hurt me, no <laughs> more, loud. no more. Uh, yeah, I don't know the name. No one knows the name of that song, but everyone knows that song. It's my Hathaway. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Like, <laughs> I'm not uh, sure if I'm I'm insulted or embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Justin, what's uh, what's uh, Deku's theme song? Well, I well, I think Deku's favorite would be All Might's favorite, whatever that ends up being. Uh, but, but the song it makes me think of is uh, what's it? Uh, Ain't nothing gonna break my stride, Matthew Wilder. Oh yeah, like Ain't nothing gonna hold me down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For some reason, I think of All Might. I think of like classic Van Halen, you know, so, yeah, nineteen eighty four album. <laughs> Just that generation. I'm surprised yours isn't jump, jump, jump. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to that one this time. I get up. <laughs> ah, Alyssa, thank you. Very fun question. And Galaxy Con viewers, this has been my time with the cast of My Hero Academia. Ladies and gentlemen, any final words for our audience before we go? Stay safe out there. Wash your hands. Wear your mask. Stay away from people. Especially me. All those, me. Things. <laughs> All those things. 
Yeah. Stay sane. Get some sunlight when you can. Yeah. Vitamin D is great. Yes. Be kind to one another. Yeah. Mm. Take care of yourself and everyone around you if, as you can. Don't Have fry to- food naked, guys. Don't ever right. do it. <laughs> right. Right. Absolutely. So, <laughs> uh, gentlemen and ladies, it's been absolutely my pleasure to serve you all today. Once again, thank you for joining us here at the Galaxy Gun Virtual Stage. Uh, thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you for all your great questions.